What's going on everyone? It's your boy back at you again with another Tommy Reads X-Men. Today we're looking at X-Men number 11 from May 1965 written by Stan Lee with art again by Jack Kirby. This one's called The Triumph of Magneto. It's gonna be a little bit of a misleading title but you know what we'll get to that. Uh, we also have a first appearance in this issue of someone called The Stranger. Who is he? He's strange? I don't know. We're gonna find out. Uh, we start off like we normally do at the X-Mansion, uh, Xavier's uh, School for the Gifted Youngsters, although he's not doing much teaching these days. But uh, Cyclops calls an emergency meeting of the X-Men. Calls the emergency, and they all run in, and Angel's like, what is it? What is it? Is Magneto? What is it? And Scott basically is like, well, you need to calm down. Okay, you need to calm down and let me say what I'm going to say. By, by me, I mean Papa Chuck in the brown pinstripe suit. And let me tell you, from personal experience, nothing, I mean nothing, man, angers people more than being told to calm down when they're not that pumped up. Like, just try it. Next time you're talking to someone, you're like, you know what? Calm down, okay? Calm it on down before I say what I need to say. And you watch their reaction like, I am calm. <laughs> you Just wait, try it. Try it and let me know down in the comments how well it worked out for you. Anyway. He, uh, Charles basically tells him that something came up on Cerebro, it's a really strong thing, and they need to check it out. Now, Beast, for some reason, starts acting like a jerk this issue, and he's using big words to try to act like he's smarter than the X-Men, so Bobby needs to take him down a peg or two, so Iceman and Beast get into a little thing that Gene needs to break up before they start destroying stuff in the room, and then Charles downplays their argument like, enough horseplay, you two. Oh, you kids, always razzing each other. Uh, the Stranger makes his appearance in the next panel. We cut away from the horseplay, and we go to The Stranger, and he's an older dude, uh, and he basically does not care if he's showing his power or not, as he kind of phases through a wall and then walks in the, uh, on like a cloud of air, and those are kind of the main powers we see him do, and he ends up walking into a building, and right there he runs into Magneto and the Brotherhood who were kind of about to start looking for him, but he found them. And so they're like, oh, oh, hey, here's the dude we wanted. That was weird. And uh, the X-Men are looking for him also. The X-Men are taking a different route. Scott, for some reason, decides to impersonate a detective uh, when he hears a couple uh, cops talking about what they saw on the beat. They saw a dude walk through, you know, walk on air. And he's like, oh, who's the guy or whatever? And then the cops are like, well, who are you? Because really, who is you? You know what I mean? And they're like, well, why don't you take off your glasses and look at us? And he's like, oh, I can't take my glasses off. And he, the, the cops ended up uh, taking the glasses off. I'm not going to say police, police brutality, but anyway. So they police brutality him uh, with his glasses off. And he can't control the blast. So he's like optic blasting the hell out of the place uh, in this alley they're in. And uh, Gene and Iceman have to make the save. And he's like, cool, thanks, Bobby. And he's like, good girl, Gene. And, which is a weird compliment to give anyone. But in Gene's thought bubble, her bloop, 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 it's like, uh, oh my gosh, hearing him say good girl is better than getting a Richard Chamberlain, my darling. Now, at this point, I had to put down the comic because I said, who the hell's Richard Chamberlain? Now, maybe it's just an age thing and it was way, way before my time. And for some of you reading, it's going to be way, way, way before your time. But uh, I had to Google who that was. And uh, Richard Chamberlain, I'm probably going to do the work for you. Uh, but Richard Chamberlain was an actor in like uh, the 60s, 70s, 80s or whatever. He was in TV miniseries called The Thornbirds. He played the Count of Monte Cristo. And, fun fact, he was the first Jason Bourne. Now, I think you're saying, what? Matt Damon was the first Jason Bourne, messing people up with a magazine. But nah, there was a TV movie, Bourne Identity, because that book hella old, uh, and he played Jason Bourne in that uh, TV movie. Had a real interesting life, actually, Wikipedia dude. Uh, but yeah, then I went back to reading. So, Magneto's like, stranger, if that's all you want us to call you. And he's like, nah, it's cool, stranger's good. And so, stranger... You should join us. And he's like, well, I mean, what's your benefits package? And boom, Magneto starts attacking him. And he's like, this why you should this why you should join us, because I got the power. And then Mastermind wants to one-up Magneto. And he tries, you know, 
masterminding the stranger and the stranger was like you know i was tolerating it from the main man but i don't need this from him and he messes mastermind the up and he basically turns him into this stone statue and he's so heavy that they're in some kind of building or whatever and he ends up falling down the levels all the way to the ground the ground level which is like a business or whatever and that's how the x-men know what's going on upstairs but this essentially, spoilers, spoilers, this takes Mastermind out of the comic. Like, he doesn't kill him, because later on, Charles kind of psychically takes his heartbeat. And he's like, he's still alive in there. Basically, he done froze Mastermind in car Carbonite, like Han, back in the day. Uh, I'm not saying that George Lucas copied Stan Lee, but I don't know. I don't know, man. He froze him in Carbonite, for reals. So Mastermind is done with for the brotherhood this is gonna be a sad theme you're gonna see so the x-men get there they start fighting the brotherhood you get scarlet witch fighting beast Iceman and angel are fighting quicksilver magneto and toad and the stranger they just get the heck out of there so basically they leave the, leave the twins to themselves and gene walks in and immediately sucker punches wanda with mind stuff she's like bah! You know, when she had her back turned and everything. Not very heroic. And you'll see why later, because Jean straight up don't like the Scarlet Witch. You'll see why later. Anyway, so the main part of this battle is that Bobby freezes Quicksilver to slow him down, but he covers him in ice so he can't breathe. Now, that's when Wanda stops fighting and she's like, just help my brother, I don't want him to die. And all the other X-Men are like, well, whatever. Except for... If you go back a few issues, you know where I'm going with this, except for Mr. Optic Beans himself, Scotty Summers in his pinstripe green suit, except for he was wearing his uniform, but you get it. He dives to Pietro's, uh, his, uh, help, and he's like, don't hurt my friend, and he basically Optic Beams so much that he, um, that he doesn't hurt him, he kind of melts the ice so he can breathe. So then he's like, oh, thanks, you know, I appreciate it. We're done with Magneto, because he bailed on us for the last time. And Scott sees his opportunity, and he's like, You should join the X-Men! We'd have so much fun! We could, you know, share our dream journals. You're not in it, but, you know, I don't know. what I'm going to rip those pages out. Anyway, um, he's like, You should join the X-Men! And he's like, looks at his sister, and he's like, mm, nah. We're probably just going to go back to Europe. We're probably going to go back to the Europe, and eventually show up in the Avengers. But uh, he didn't know that at the time. And so Scott was like, well, I always knew you were too good for Magneto. He can't help you the way we can help you. And he's like, yeah, all right, well, we're going to go. You're making it weird. And so Scott gets to say his goodbye to his best friend, Pietro Maximoff. And they're gone. So Brotherhood's down to two members now. Mastermind's taken out. The twins are like deuces. Mags, we're out of here. And then we cut to the stranger who uh, did escape with Magneto and Toad, and he basically tells him he's an alien. He's an alien from another world who came to check out what uh, what's going on in our world. And when he landed, he uh, got on the radar of a lot of people, but Magneto happened to get to him first. Now, the X-Men went back to the mansion to go get Charles and talk to him about this, and they're like, we don't think he's a mutant. And Charles, who said he popped up on Cerebro and who said to check it out, friggin snaps on him he's like i know he's not a mutant i know that you trying to tell papa chuck something you the one who needs to learn and he's like just going off on him and they're standing there with the and kirby draws this shocked expressions on their face like oh huh? right and it's like he's just losing the gasket maybe because he thinks he was wrong and don't want to admit he's wrong because that ain't papa chuck style you gonna apologize to me i ain't gonna apologize to you kind of charles xavier vibe but anyway, he says, you know what, I'm going to go with you and check out this stranger dude. So they go, and they meet up in, I want to say Central Park, uh, with Stranger and Magneto and Toad. And at this point, the stranger has them tied up. And he's like, uh, with magnetic, some kind of magnetic thing that's nullifying Magneto's powers. And Toad's just there, like he always is. And the stranger meets him, and he's like, oh, Charles Xavier, because apparently everybody knows who he is. And he's like, I'm going to take these two to my planet and experiment on them and learn about mutants. And he's like, what you going to do about it? 
And Charles is like, well, uh, Magneto, it's been fun, but... And then the stranger just shoots him up into space. And then he leaves. And despite the fact that Charles cares about all mutant kind and uh, wants to do great by the mutants, he just lets this dude take them and shoot them up into space to do gosh knows what with what probes. Because you know that's what aliens do. I've said too much. And they might be after me after this. But do God knows what. And he's fine with it. He's fine with it. Just like he let that dude go, Lucifer go, a couple issues ago. Uh, you know, next time it's going to be me and you. But uh, you can get out of here this time. He lets him go. He lets him go again. I don't see why he would let him go experiment on someone with mutant kind. But this essentially means the end of the Brotherhood. Now, at the very end of the issue, he says, you know, we both tried to get to the stranger, but Magneto got there first. So that was the triumph of Magneto, which was the title of our comic. Very misleading. You're a kid in 1965 or an adult, I don't know who's reading these, and you're like, oh, the triumph of Magneto, he's finally going to get a W? Max needs this to keep his, you know, stamina up. But it's very misleading. How could he triumph if he got shot up into space and shot up out the comic, which it seems like it was? I didn't like that title. Not one bit. Anyway, final thoughts. This was about a six and a half out of ten. Magneto's one of my favorite X-Men, to be honest. And I didn't like that they kind of got rid of the Brotherhood. I don't know when they're coming back. We know they do come back because Magneto's still in the comics to this day in 2020. But... Yeah, I didn't like, so, <sighs> Masterminds and Carbonite, the twins went on a Euro trip, and Toad and Magneto are getting probed somewhere, unfortunately. And, yeah, the action was just okay. It was more like, you know, a couple panels of battle, and then mostly this was all different ways to just get rid of the Brotherhood, write them out. Uh, the Stranger was kind of lame to me. Like, he was just a dude who showed up and dismantled the Brotherhood one-handedly. What does that say about the X-Men? How come they can't get the job done, or, do, or are they just playing? You know what I mean? Like, we're having a good time fighting you guys. We'll see you on Tuesday. But the stranger, 